Hi, I'm Brandon from Achievable. Before we get started, just a quick plug for our learning program. Achievable offers courses on all major FINRA and NASAA exams, including the SIE, Series 6, 7, 63, 65, and 66 exams. This is a great learning program if you're looking for easy to understand, fun, and engaging material that uses technology to help you pass. I wrote the course content exclusively for Achievable, which includes tons of real world examples, videos just like this one on dozens of key topics, a built-in study planner, hundreds of chapter review questions, and unlimited practice exams. In short, if you love these videos, then you will love what we have on Achievable. Our courses are competitively priced, and you can try them out for free to see if our style is the right fit for you. Follow the links below in the description to get started. Convertible securities can be a difficult topic to master, especially with those math-based questions involving lots of numbers, calculations, but let's spend some time demystifying what's happening, look at the formulas that we might need to use for these types of questions, and figure out exactly what's going on. Let's go ahead and look at a practice question together. Okay. Peyton Incorporated, $100 par, 4% convertible preferred stock is trading at 105. The conversion price is $10, and Peyton Inc. common stock is trading at $8. What is the parity price of the preferred stock? Okay, that's a lot of information they've given us in just a few sentences. A lot of numbers, uh, and like with most math-based questions where calculations are required to be performed, some of these numbers are probably going to be used and some of them are not. So let's go ahead and, and pick it apart sentence by sentence. Let's go back to that first sentence first. Paint and ink, $100 par. Pause. $100 par is basically the face value of this preferred stock investment. The par value is important for a couple of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of securities like preferred stock are issued at their par value. Same thing with a lot of bonds. That's not always the case, but that usually happens. The par value is also important because that is what the dividend rate for preferred stock is based upon. And actually, if we go to the next number in the question, 4%, 4% of $100 is $4. This preferred stock pays $4 in annual income and if it's like most preferred stock out there, it makes semi-annual payments. So if we're thinking big picture here, this preferred stock makes two $2 payments during the year for a total of $4 in dividends. The last reason the par value is important is because if the preferred stock is ever called in the future, uh, it's usually the basis for that call. So for example, a lot of preferred stocks that are callable, if they're called, they're usually called at par maybe plus a call premium. So for example, if it was par plus $2, that would be the $2 would be the call premium. But again, the $100 par value is the basis for the security being called, if it's even callable. Not every preferred stock is callable. Now technically stock has no end. It doesn't mature at any point in time in the future like a bond. If this was a bond, then whenever this bond would mature, then the par value would be paid back to the investor at maturity. But that's not what happens here. 105 in this question is what we refer to as a percentage of par quote. We see this with bonds as well. Whenever we see a number just given to us and it's referenced as its trading price with no dollar sign, it's almost always in reference to a percentage of par quote. Well, what does that mean in plain English? This preferred stock is trading at 105% of its par value, which happens to be 100. And this is pretty simple. What's 105% of $100? It's just $105. So this convertible preferred stock is trading in the market at $105. That will come into play later. So far in the first sentence, that's what we've established. $100 par value. This preferred stock is paying whoever owns it $4 a year in annual dividends. And it's trading in the market at $105 per share. Let's go to the second sentence. The conversion price is $10. Let's pause there. The conversion price is a very important element of any convertible question you come across. 
One thing you're not seeing in this question is reference to the conversion ratio. And in fact, let's actually start with the conversion ratio first. The conversion ratio is arguably the most important aspect of any convertible question that you come across. If you know anything about a convertible security, it means that we have a security that's paying us dividends in this case, get $4 in dividends every year. But we also have the ability at any point in time to call up our broker or maybe log in online and click a button and magically this preferred stock will turn into a specific number of shares of common stock in the same company. So in plain English, we've got a patent ink convertible preferred stock. Let's say we have one share of it. We can convert that into a specific number of common shares in the same company, patent ink. You might be wondering why someone would convert preferred stock into common stock. And the main reason this may occur is shifting priorities of the investor. Preferred stock is primarily an income paying security. Investors tend to purchase them just for their dividend rate. So again, hey, for every share I own in this preferred stock, it just pays me $4 a year in dividends. Most preferred stock investors don't really have too much access to what we call capital appreciation or capital gains. Capital gain just means buy low, sell high. The primary driver of preferred stock is actually interest rates. And they have an inverse relationship with interest rates just like a bond does. When interest rates go down, preferred stock prices go up and vice versa. When interest rates go up, preferred stock values go down. Interest rate changes are somewhat unpredictable. So most investors don't really rely on preferred stock for capital gains. On the other hand, we basically have the opposite scenario with common stock. Can common stock pay a dividend to its shareholders? Yes. Some companies pay dividends on their common stock. Now, most common stocks in the market don't pay dividends on their common stock. And let's assume that Peyton Inc. common stock in this example doesn't pay a dividend. What benefit does common stock really provide an investor? Capital appreciation or capital gains. Buy low, sell high. That is the primary reason why investors put their money into common stock. And common stock prices are primarily driven by how successful a company is. If a company does really well, it creates more revenue, sells more of its products and services, its price typically will go up in the market because investors will demand its stock more so in the market. Now that doesn't really happen with preferred stock. Preferred stock is a fixed income investment and no matter how well the company does, they're not gonna pay you extra dividends unless maybe the shares are participating. And these shares, we'll assume are not participating. By the way, in case you're wondering, participating preferred stock is preferred stock that pays more dividends when the company is more successful financially. But again, we have no indication that these are participating shares and therefore we will not assume they are. So big picture here, an investor would convert preferred stock into common stock if they were looking to leave an income paying investment and move their money more so into an investment that's more eligible for growth. Maybe this investor is like, hey, I, I'm done collecting just $4 in measly dividends per share here. I want to convert it into common stock, and let's see if that market price will rise to the moon. All right, let's go ahead and get back to the original point. The conversion ratio is the most important part of really any math-based convertible question, and it was not provided to us in the question, but the conversion price was. Let's go ahead and put the conversion ratio formula in front of us. The conversion ratio is equal to the par value divided by the conversion price. And if we take the $100 par value and divide it by the conversion price of 10, we get a conversion ratio of 10, or we might say 10 to one. That means if we decide to convert our one share of preferred stock, we will get 10 shares of common stock. My biggest advice to you when you approach a math-based convertible question is identify the conversion ratio as soon as you can. Sometimes it'll be provided to you in the question, and if it's not, then they have to give you the conversion price. Once they give you the conversion price, again, take the par value, divided by the conversion price, and you have the conversion ratio. All right, we'll keep track of that 10 to one conversion ratio, but let's go ahead and get to the end of the second sentence. Peyton Inc. common stock is trading at $8. Knowing the market price of the common stock is actually a pretty important thing for the investor. Now why? 
it will tell the investor if it's worth it to convert into the common stock. Let's say the investor bought the preferred shares for $100. Well, they probably don't want to convert into less than $100 of common stock. Would it make sense to originally buy $100 preferred stock shares and then convert it, say, into $60 of common stock? Probably not. Now, that common stock market price is going to be important for us to get to the answer. So let's go ahead and look at the question again. What is the parity price of the preferred stock? Parity price can certainly seem like a complex topic, but let's try to demystify it real quick. The word parity basically means equivalent. We're trying to figure out what is the equivalent price of the preferred stock, assuming we're just looking at the conversion feature. And yeah, that might sound a little confusing, but let's first and foremost put up the formula up on the screen. The parity price of the preferred stock is equal to the market price of the common stock multiplied times the conversion ratio. Now, of course, you could simply just memorize this formula, but let's talk about what exactly we're doing with this. We have preferred stock that is convertible into 10 shares of common stock. So let's go ahead and plug that into the formula. And the common stock is trading at $8 per share. Let's plug that into the formula. We can think of our convertible preferred stock kind of like a pack of something. It's almost like we have a 10 pack of stock. And we're trying to figure out what is the pack worth based upon the individual units in a pack. If we're looking at a 10 pack of common stock and each share of common stock is worth $8 a piece, then our pack should be worth $80 overall. This is really no different than maybe some of the math you've done when you go shopping. What if you really like a shirt and you find a 10 pack of them? Well, if you think that each shirt is worth $8, then the pack to you is worth 80 bucks. We're not doing anything differently here. So of course, our answer is A, 80 bucks. That is the parity price of the preferred stock. This type of parity price can certainly help the investor figure out if it's worth it to convert into common stock. The parity price of the preferred stock will tell them what is the overall value of the common stock they can convert into. Well, if we bought the preferred stock originally for 100 bucks and we can convert it into $80 of common stock, mm, that might not make a bunch of sense. And the investor probably would not convert in that example. Now, you might also know that there's another version of parity price. It's the parity price of the common stock. So let's go ahead and use basically the same information, but slightly change the question to what is the parity price of the common stock? We will still have the same conversion ratio of 10 to 1 because nothing has changed in terms of the first two sentences of our question. The big change is what type of parity price we're looking for. And there is a separate calculation for parity price of the common stock. The parity price of the common stock is equal to the market price of the preferred stock divided by the conversion ratio. If we're looking at this purely from the standpoint of the formula, and we're pretty good at memorizing formulas, we can just plug in the numbers and figure out the answer. The preferred stock's market value, again, is $105. The conversion ratio is 10. So if we take $105 divided by 10, we will get $10.50. And that certainly is our answer, which is C. But let's dive a little bit deeper into the meaning of this and what this is actually telling us. Again, let's think about the preferred stock like a 10-pack. If I'm looking at a 10-pack, let's say of t-shirts again, and the 10-pack is $105, if we were to do this math here, we would tell us what we're paying on a per shirt basis. I buy the pack for $105, there's 10 units in the pack, so I'm basically paying $10.50 per shirt. Investors can also utilize this type of parity price to figure out if it's worth it, again, to convert into common stock. Let's say the investor actually bought this preferred stock for $105. Well. Again, if we take 105 divided by 10, we get $10.50. If they were to convert this into common stock, it's basically like they're paying $10.50 per share of common stock. So when would the investor actually want to convert the preferred stock into common stock? It's probably when the common stock would be trading above $10.50. 
For example, what if the common stock was trading at $12.50? Well, they could convert the preferred stock into 10 shares of common stock, sell that common stock at $12.50, and make a profit of essentially $2 per share. That would be a $20 profit overall. Let's go ahead and clear the question off the screen and just look at the two parity price formulas for our conclusion of this video. We have parity price of the preferred stock and parity price of the common stock. Memorizing formulas alongside all the other things you need to know for these exams is definitely a tough thing to do, but sometimes we can look at these in a unique way and it maybe will make it a little bit easier to remember. Let's look at the common themes between both parity price formulas. Both of them include the conversion ratio in the formula. Okay, that's a valuable thing to know. You have to use the conversion ratio to get to the parity price, always. Another unique thing about parity price is if we're looking for the parity price of one of the items being preferred or common stock, then we have to use the market price of the other thing in the formula. So for example, if I'm looking for the parity price of the preferred stock, I'm going to use the market price of the common stock in the formula. And vice versa. If I'm looking for the parity price of the common stock, I'm going to use the market price of the preferred stock in the formula. And beyond that, the only difference is whether you multiply or divide. One last nugget of knowledge you might use in the exam. If you can't remember whether you should multiply or divide, you can try to recall this. Whatever number you end up with in terms of the formula should seem like a number that relates to the product you're talking about. So for example, if I'm looking for the parity price of the preferred stock, if the preferred stock's par value is 100, whatever number you get there should be pretty close to 100. With the parity price of the preferred stock, if you were to divide instead of multiply, you would get a pretty low number and would probably be pretty far off any of the answers that they would give you. If you were to multiply instead of divide with the parity price of the common stock, you get a really big number that probably would not seem terribly relatable to where the common stock was currently trading at or really any of the answers they gave you. So worst case scenario, if you can't remember to multiply or divide, maybe that'll help you get to the right answer. All right, hopefully that will help with your math-based convertible questions. Now you go out there, go through some practice questions, try it on your own.